Live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE's presentation of DockerCon 2017. I'm Stu Miniman, trained by Jim Kobielis. Happy to have on the program, my next guest is Chad Thibodeau, who is the principal product manager with Veritas. Of course, we know Veritas uh, on the Wikibon side, you know, back Veritas before the semantic acquisition back out. So, Chad, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, thank All you right, for having so, me. Tell us a little bit about kind of your role, uh, what you do at sure. Veritas. Sure, so I'm a product manager at Veritas, um, responsible for a new product offering called Hyperscale for Containers. All right. Um, so it's a software-defined storage solution. We actually just are announcing our beta at this conference. Um, and again, our inaugural first time exhibiting at DockerCon. So very excited to be here. Yeah, and, and, and Chad, one, one of the questions coming into the show is, you know, storage seems to be uh, the thing that is going to take the longest to mature uh, when, when, when it comes to containers. So, you know, first couple of years watching, you know, everything was stateless. It's, you know, the Google two billion, you know, containers. The average lifespan of a container is, you know, I, I think they call those, you know, uh, uh, oh gosh, I forget the analogy. It was like, is it a, you know the the gnat that lives for a couple of right. hours, or exactly. is it the dinosaur uh, yep. that might live for years? Like when we think of storage, we're like that stuff I stick in my data center for years. <laughs> so, uh, do we have stateful content? You know, uh, usage of storage. Uh, you know, are can storage be used in production? So bring us up to speed as to how sure. your product fits yeah, and, yeah, and what sure. that means in that whole development. Yeah. So um, I myself have been actually working with containers for probably about the past two years at different capacity. First within the a CTO org at Veritas. Like you said, you know, about two years ago, I would agree with you, there was a lot of kind of contemplating are you ever going to really need persistent storage? I would say now what we're finding is not only is it needed, but it's probably one of the biggest challenges. So with our product, the key is, is it provides storage persistence, but it also provides um, quality of service. And I think the combination of that is actually something that really is challenging a lot of these companies that want to run them in production, so. All right, uh, talk to us a little bit about your customers. What are they asking for? What are those use cases that sure. uh, you, you know your, your product's going to fill? So, a lot of uh, customers that we're talking with are looking at kind of a container initiative, if you will. So they're trying to figure out, you know, do I actually take a legacy app, put it in containers, or do I only limit this to new um, developments? We're kind of seeing a mix of both, I would say, um, in terms of what they're talking about is they're facing the same challenges that a lot of people face with virtual machines, which is how do I get that data protection for my container? Again, how do I get that guaranteed performance? Um, and then I want to have a storage provider that I can actually trust because it's my data right at the end of the day. So, so we kind of feel like we fit all three of those bills. Okay, so your software-defined storage. Can you walk yes. us through the stack a little? Docker yeah, uh, sure. is a partner there. Who else are you working yep. with to put the whole solution together? Yeah, so it's a software-defined storage play. Um, what's unique and without a visual, but I'll just explain it, is you have a concept of two planes. You have a compute plane, a data plane. Yep. And so in the compute plane, you're going to have basically direct attached storage nodes. We would then attach container volumes there to service the application, so you have highest performance, it's right there. And then in the data plane, that's where all your data management services are. So snapshots, replication, eventually a backup integration. Um, sharding. Could do sharding, could do erasure coding, right. All of that encryption, all of that would happen down there. And the idea is so you don't have any impact to the compute plane, you have this kind of clear separation. So in other words, think of the opposite of hyperconverge, right, is hyperscale. You're purposely trying to separate those two. Um, so I think again, you know, with customers, they like that concept, and I think that they are starting to come around to where everything. I mean, I've seen the transition from direct attach to NAS to SAN. Now it seems to be going back again to direct attach, so that they can really isolate the storage that's needed for the application. Well, it's interesting. We have at Wikibon, we have a category we call server SAN, and or, yeah, said exactly. yep. hyperconverged infrastructure. Um, we really don't see that that software layer is really what drives a lot of those solutions, so it's not necessarily that HCI can't do this, but it's how do we really build you know, storage services with the disaggregated architecture, yeah. it's distributed systems, and therefore you know, it's not about the appliance, it's about you know, those new models of doing it. Right. It's, it you know, we're not going to do it the old way right. I mean, I, I date myself, I remember back when we, we tried to do network storage, the reason we called it server SAN is 
we're going to build it in the server, but it's going to give us all those features and functions and value propositions that the external SAN yeah, yeah, yeah. did. So that, that's Actually, why I love that. the idea of server yeah. SAN because yeah. one, of the, one of the things we're doing is we are virtualizing that storage within the server so that you could have different tiers all of it gets virtualized. It's all now a logical, right, storage pool that you can use. So yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. But we thought about it from you know the guy that lives with storage. What you say, Daz, and that thing takes me back, you know, <laughs> right. 15, 20 years. Exactly. So we know that's not new. But when we start getting into the, you know, some really cool new applications, whether you're talking okay, some of the edge applications like IoT, talking about analytics and big data stuff that you know Jim loves, we need some of these more distributed right. architectures exactly. to be able to build. And how that. would you containerize it? By volumes, by uh, storage drives, or whatever. Well, so when you say containerize, are you talking about storage. so for the storage? So, so at what level of atomicity? Or sure. So to be real clear, first, I think the other thing that's unique is this is completely delivered as container images. So the hyperscale for containers, it consists of basically like five different Im images, right? One is a plugin, one is I/O services, one is your RESTful API services, etc. So what we are then doing is we are basically provisioning container volumes that will get then attached or assigned to the container application. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's so you are installing us both on the compute nodes as well as on the data nodes. And that way again we kind of control both. So mm. and then okay. between there's a network layer, right, that would be required um, right. to have the communication. Good. So Chad, anything with those kind of interesting new use cases that uh, you know you see is you know what 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 use cases you're starting with, and, and where do you see kind of this going That's, in the future? Yeah, you ask a very interesting question because it's kind of like I don't think there's a silver bullet. In other words, you know, as I talk to customers and I talk to analysts and I go to conferences, I'm trying to find out the same thing. Like, is there you know specific use cases that are better than others? What I can tell you is new applications, so whether you call them cloud native, whether you call them you know, the um, you know, web scale, those applications are really highly designed for container um, environments. And that's where they're going to still need the persistent storage. But on the flip side, we have customers that are actually taking legacy monolithic apps and they're sticking them in containers. And a great example for you to think of is, so you're familiar with Veritas, Net Backup, our product, we've containerized Net Backup. You can actually put the entire Net Backup into a container image. We haven't refactored per se and split it into different services. It's basically being delivered that way just for an easier way to consume it. So. Uh, uh, the other thing when we're talking about containers is how this fits into the whole cloud picture. What, what, what does cloud mean for your customers at Veritas? How do your products fit in you know, the, the worlds of Amazon, Microsoft, said, Google, and the yep, like? Yep. Yeah, so we've done some recent announcements. Um, so we're definitely very heavily focused on supporting cloud workloads or applications running in the cloud, whether it's uh, on-premise cloud or private cloud, a hybrid or public. So we have working relationships with Amazon, with Microsoft, with Google. Um, what we see is we're starting to see customers um, take more of a hybrid approach, so they like to possibly start with public cloud providers, and then you know they may want to bring some of that on-premise for security, resiliency, what have you. Um, and then there's the other other way around, but I think I think we're finding more and more are starting their journey in the public cloud, and then and then kind of bringing it to more of a hybrid approach. But yeah, but we're very committed. I guess bottom line answer: we're committed to cloud. So. Yeah. so Chad, how should people be th thinking of Veritas now as a standalone company? You know, you're not one of the corporate spokes people, but you know, <laughs> yeah. as, as, as people think, you know, what 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 do they tell you from from a branding standpoint? Sure. You know, I see the red shirts, I see the logo. Yep. It's something I've known for most of my career. Right. Uh, so you so know, we're what do know? so we are repositioning ourselves as truly a data management company. So if you look at our portfolio of products, right, spans from backup to resiliency to archive to storage, all of that taking a 360 view, we're saying it's 360 data management. So we want to be really that single provider to the customer that manages all of their all aspects of their data, whether it's again protection, you know, resiliency, et cetera. Okay, so so, so, is, so da is data the new oil, is it the new gold? I was gonna the new say money, it's kind of you know? yeah, <laughs> data's data's what's in, right. Yeah. Data's the new thing. Um and I think the other thing just to leave you with is we really are we jokingly say, right, we're a multi-billion dollar startup. I mean, when we split off from Symantec, we had the ability to really refocus the company, and so that is where we're now focused, is it's all around data management. We want to be that provider, so, so yeah.
Think of us, what's old is now new again. <laughs> if it is the new oil, then containers are the new barrels of oil. There you go. There you yeah. go. There you go. A absolutely. Distributed oil everywhere. Uh, <laughs> something like that. All right, Ted Thibodeau, really appreciate you giving us all the updates yep. on Veritas. Congratulations on, on the announcements you're making. Thank this you week. very much. And we'll be back with more coverage here from DockerCon 2017. You're watching theCUBE.